Abortion survivors have their own bill, and two congressmen are making sure it's getting attention. Senator James Lankford of Oklahoma and Representative Trent Franks of Arizona made an appeal for babies who survive an abortion attempt. The bill provides punishments for surgeons who kill a child who survives that abortion. This is not about abortion. This is about a child that has been delivered now that everyone is looking at and can see physically uh, now on the table. And it would only seem right that this child receives medical care. Lawmakers say the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act would criminally prosecute for murder anyone who commits an act that kills a child born alive. Melissa Odin is an abortion survivor. She didn't find out until she was 14 years old, and that news devastated her. The Catholic convert is now a pro-life advocate. She recently met her birth mother for the first time in what she says is a life-changing experience. After everything I've gone through in my life and, and my healing from it, uh, my tears are not tears of pain. My tears are just tears of incredible gratitude. You can see more of Melissa Odin's personal story during the premiere of EWTN's Pro-Life Weekly. The show is designed to shine the light of truth on issues like abortion and assisted suicide. It airs Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Joining us now is Jeannie Mancini, president of March for Life, which takes place in... Three days. Three days. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a short period of time. Yep. What is the difference between last year and this year in terms of interest in the march? Well, last year, you'll remember that there was a blizzard that was forecast. <laughs> oh, that's so there right. was so much that's talk right. about the blizzard, and is the march still going to go on, and this, that, and the other. That's but right. In addition to that, you know, we have a new president here in Washington, D.C. And oh, you do? we do. I think his name is Donald Trump. That's right. <laughs> You've heard of him. Everybody's very excited about his promises to the pro-life community, about his promises to enact good pro-life legislation. And he's already doing it. He's already we reported at that yeah. at the so top the, of the show. Right. So the enthusiasm is, is palpable. I and mean, the it White House has also mentioned this march. The, three times in the course of the last couple of days, Kellyanne Conway, who's one of our speakers yes. at the March for Life, and then Sean Spicer mentioned it in a, in a press conference earlier today. So that's very exciting. We typically only are labeled the anti-abortion rally from the White House, and it's exciting to be really talked about as the March for Life and media report on the March for Life. What does that mean for media coverage? What are you seeing? Uh, we're seeing a huge uptick in media coverage. So right before I came over, I was on the phone with NPR. Before that, NBC Nightly News. Before that, the New York Times. So outlets that, you know, sometimes report on the march but aren't typically that friendly towards the march have been calling and we've been having sort of in-depth conversations and it's been a great opportunity. Talk about the Women's March very briefly versus this yeah. march. I think that some pro-life groups, as we've reported, were shut out of that march. They were, which is unfortunate. I, the Women's March, um, it's really confusing about what that was really about and what the goals were. So I myself planned on marching until they said they were specifically pro-choice. Right. I just feel terrible for the young women who were there who didn't get to hear the truth about life. So there's so much to be said on that. Um, we've seen some women who are angry because their voices weren't represented at the Women's March respond by um, by, by calling the you? March for Life. Yeah, saying, we had all to right, we're marching. Call in volunteers to answer That's all of great. the emails, all of the calls because we we can't handle it. This is it. so different. I remember covering this. <clears throat> this is so different from last year. We can't wait to talk to you at the end of the week. I know you're speaking at the Washington Monument, which is the command central for the march. Jeannie Mancini, president of March for Life. Thanks for having me, Lauren. Thanks for being here. And from all of us here at EWTN News Nightly, to all of you around the world, I'm Lauren Ashburn. Don't forget, you can see every broadcast of the show on EWTN's YouTube channel. I'll see you again tomorrow. Good night and God bless.